Hello, this is Morgan and Sean. We're from Great Falls, Montana. Uh, we love watching Trucker Josh vlogs. Don't forget to subscribe. Good morning, everybody. We're just here to pick up our trailer. And uh, I've got four drops actually. So I've got one in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, one in Calgary, Alberta, and two in Surrey, British Columbia. And then I have a reload in Surrey at my last drop actually. I'm going to drop the rest of the freight and then load new freight right at that same place. And that's going to Minnesota. So uh, apparently there's only 11 pieces on this trailer. It's under the tarp, it's glass. Uh, so I'm curious to see what this trailer is going to look like. Only 11 pieces. Now, I'm guessing if there's only 11 on there, because usually I have, what, something like 40? 20 to 40, somewhere in there. So these must be pretty big sheets of glass. Either that or they got a good deal on a very small load, because they still got to pay the full load price, right? The full load rate. Otherwise, we wouldn't pull it. We wouldn't pull half a load for half the price. If you want us to pull a load all the way over to BC, you're going to have to pay us full price either way, right? So they're not even that heavy, though. That's why I'm thinking they're not that big. Why won't my truck start? What happened? Why won't you start? Hey, hey, come to life. There you are. Just got to talk to her a little sternly sometimes. Let her know who's boss. So uh, let's go and find our trailer and see what's going on. Because according to the paperwork, I'm only going to have like, I think 7,000 pounds of glass on me. And usually it's closer to 30,000 pounds. They're paying the full rate, so must have been a pretty good deal. They told me that it was a, a moneymaker trip. So I'm like, hmm, well, okay. I guess they meant that it's going to be a light load. I'm going to be burning less fuel. But I mean, you start throwing dollar signs at me. Hey, I'm there. I'm your best friend. One second. One second. Let me open the door here. Hey, where did I just put my... I just had it. There it is. Got to open the door here so I can open the gate so I can get in here. Go find my trailer. It's supposed to be already tarped. Someone else, whoever picked it up in Minnesota, uh, tarped it for me and left his tarps in there because you can't just leave the trailer in the yard with no tarps on it. I mean glass would get all dirty and then the customer would, customer would know that it was untarped at one point in bad weather because we had pouring rain this whole win this whole uh, weekend right all right all right let's see let's see what she looks like oh I bet you that's her right there that is a tiny little load and nicely tarped impressed hashtag impressed yeah that's it right here about what I thought it would look like, being that small. Look at that, all nicely tarped. I mean, it does have a big, oh, it's okay, there's another tarp underneath it there. Okay, good, so that hole doesn't mean anything. It's not my tarp, I gotta get it fixed though. But look at that all nicely wrapped like a nice little Christmas present for Trucker Josh. Early Christmas, look at this. I don't even gotta do any work, I just hook on and go. <laughs> That's awesome. Well done, whoever tarped that. Oh, there's duct tape at the top there. Oh. Okay, I'll still say well done because it, it's tarped. Thank you. Thank you, whoever did that. I will return the tarps to you when I get back. You know who you are. Thank you. I don't even care that there's duct tape on there, that there's a hole in the other one. I don't care. It's tarped, and I don't have to tarp it. I don't even have to tie it down. This is like being on dry vans again. Just hook up and go. I forgot how good this feels. Look at this. Hook her on here, it's gonna be a bit of a kathump. It's left kinda high. Oh, oh. oh, there we are. Did I hook in? No, I didn't. You, he left the trailer kinda high. Oh, oh, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to lower the, oh, there it is, it clicked in. Yeah, we're locked in. Uh, I wonder if some people have a, a higher fifth wheel than me 
every now and then I pull up to a trailer to hook onto it and it's like way too high. It's like they unhooked and then kept cranking it so that it's like four inches above my fifth wheel. I wonder who has a fifth wheel that's that high? Because if you pulled a, a van trailer, a regular van trailer with a fifth wheel that's four inches higher than mine, you'd be over height everywhere, right? Your trailer would be like over 14 feet. Mm -hmm. Not 14 feet, but close to 14 feet. I think what people do is they crank it too much when they unhook. You don't need to crank it that much. Just crank it until the, the landing gear touch the ground and then maybe give it like two or three more cranks just, just a little bit to take a little bit of pressure off the fifth wheel and then slowly drive out. Like before you drive out, release the air in your suspension so your frame lowers and then slowly go out and then put air back in your suspension before you drive off again, obviously. But uh, you don't need to crank it up so high. Just heads up. I'm just gonna quickly weigh myself here. I know I'm not even close to being overweight, but just before I leave the yard, just to be sure. Okay, so one axle at a time, or one set of axles at a time. This is my steers. Steers is at 11,720. We're allowed 12,000, so we're legal. My drive axles here on the back of my truck, sitting at 16,660. I'm allowed 37,500. I'd say I'm not overweight. And my trailer axles, I have a tandem axle, which means I have two axles on this trailer. Both of them are sitting at 11,080 pounds. And again, I'm allowed 37,500 pounds. So I don't think we're gonna get an overweight ticket. I'm thinking we're gonna be pretty good, and I think we're gonna do some pretty good fuel economy too. Money, 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 money. That sweet smell of money to come, you know? It's just, it smells so good. It's coming, just gotta get this to BC. I know it's annoying in Winnipeg with all their stoplights on the highway here, but uh, I'm gonna give you guys a friendly little pointer when driving around our capital city. <clears throat> you listening? Truck drivers, see this guy on the left here? If at all possible, do not stop at a red light in the left lane. You are blocking that lane from all the cars that wanna get past. I know you might not care, but it is bad etiquette. Just so you know, when you pull up to a stoplight on the highway, all trucks should be lined up in the right lane, even though the right lane is way further backed up than the left lane. Leave the left lane open for the cars. Etiquette of Winnipeg 101. That one's free. I know it's a pain that these traffic lights are here. I, I disagree with them. I'm a, every other city on planet Earth, and probably on every other planet with life, have overpasses on their main highways going around their capital cities. Not Winnipeg, Winnipeg's very special. Very special. You know, when Winnipeg was born, everyone said this is going to be a very special city for special people. And it's gonna be different. And it's gonna be obnoxious. But uh, that's just some, some etiquette for you there. At least he's taken off pretty fast there, but uh, still shouldn't do that. You may disagree with it, so that's okay. Agree to disagree then, but everyone's gonna look at you and shake their head at you and scowl at you and give you dirty looks if you do that. Just stay in the right lane until all the cars are passed and then then go around, you know? I don't think I need to explain that any further. You get it. So uh, I'm sure that explains enough that we're going around Winnipeg right now. We're on the south perimeter. We have a few more traffic lights to get through yet before we're on the freedom of the Trans-Canada westbound. I'll be in Saskatoon tonight. We're 850 kilometers away, which is eight and a half hours of driving approximately. So uh, how many miles would that be? 500 and some? 520, something like that? This guy is exceptionally slow though. I do need to get around him once the cars are passed. When you approach Winnipeg, you just sort of gotta have it in your mind that I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry, okay? You can't rush through here. It's a lot of traffic and overpasses are badly needed. Have I mentioned that yet? Winnipeg doesn't have overpasses where, you know, every other city would. Okay, you get it, you get it. Okay, after this car, I'm going for it. All right.
right, buddy, come on, step on it. Do the speed limit at least. You're in the passing lane. Use the passing lane to pass. I've been waiting for my opportunity. Don't mess it up. Give her, bud. Come on. A little Ford can't go any faster than that. You can't go going fast as I can. Move. I waited. I waited for you. Now go. I'm going to get past this guy before he slows me down and I have another light. Because I don't want to arrive at the next light in the left lane again. That's exactly what I was telling you guys not to do. But this car is not going to move. There we go. There we go. See? Get back into that lane before this next traffic light. Ay, 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 ay. And then when they do build an overpass like that, you get launched out of your seat. Oh, Winnipeg, you're special. You're very special. I lived in Winnipeg for a total of what, four years? Three and a half, four years? Yeah, my wife grew up in Winnipeg. <laughs> We're never going back. So I've decided against my uh, better my better knowledge, I guess, to take Highway 16 from Portage La Prairie to Saskatoon. It's a two-lane highway instead of going 30 miles further or 50 kilometers further and taking the four-lane highway through Regina. This just goes straight to Saskatoon. A little bit shorter, but... Uh, Risking, you could risk getting caught behind someone's slope. There's also more towns you got to go through on this road too. So it, it adds up to be about the same amount of time usually, but I figured I'd take this road this time. You know, just for fun. See what would happen. Change the scenery. It's a little less uh, congested on this road usually. Like there's less big towns and cities. It's sort of just more so the straight through the prairies. about eight hours of, well, seven and a half hours of this ahead of us. Well, it's just about nine o'clock at night. I'm driving straight at that big ball of fire. It doesn't want to go away. Oh, this guy's passing? Is he in my lane? No, no, he's not. There have been some crazy people today. Crazy, crazy people making dangerous passes. Like, they see me coming. I'm this big truck. All my lights are on. And they pull out to pass when they clearly shouldn't. Uh, someone's going to cause an accident yet. I've had to slow down and hit the shoulder and everything. I don't know why people are so impatient. They have to pass, even though it might kill them. They'll probably go home and, you know, sit down at the dinner table, have no idea how lucky they are to be sitting with their family and not dead on the side of the highway the way they're driving. It's just, people have no idea. That's life though, eh? How much further do we got here? We got two and three quarter hours approximately. 274 kilometers. So what is nine, 10, 11? Oh wow. Now I'm gonna get there a lot later than I thought I would. I thought I was gonna be there by like nine or 10. It's nine o'clock now already. So about three hours ago. That's crazy. Everything always takes longer than you think it will, you know? <laughs> Brits had to learn that at home too. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll usually tell her when I'm, I think I'll be home. And almost every time it turns out I'm home way later, way later. So I'm trying just not to give specific times already when I'll be home. Because I know that if I say I'll be home by like three o'clock in the afternoon, it'll turn out to be like 10 o'clock at night. I get home. Trucking. Trucking. Trucking, trucking. Oh well, we still get there in time to uh, make our delivery tomorrow morning. We only got one piece that's being delivered to Saskatoon there. And then we head off to Calgary. Saskatoon. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. 
how dare you? No, not nice. So I'm gonna stay at the Flying J here if I can find a parking spot. Then turn right on Arthur Rose Avenue. So we're only like down the road. We're just down the road from our customer. So let Mandy know here that she doesn't need to yap at me anymore. Otherwise, she'll just keep talking because she doesn't know when to be quiet. She's useful. She's just very yappy sometimes. All right, let's see if I can find a place to park. I think my favorite spot is available right here on the street. One second. Yeah, I can park right in front of this guy or behind him. Nice. I'm gonna go and do a U-turn, come pull in right behind him. Sweet. Right out front. Awesome, then we'll deliver first thing in the morning. We'll come back here, we'll fuel up. And that will be that. Right here, that's my favorite spot. Uh-huh. Perfect. Nice. And that's it. Oh, so, those of you who follow me on, uh, on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, you may have seen me post about a week ago, I guess, about uh, the fact that I'm not going to be posting videos or filming videos anymore on Sundays. Uh, the reason being is, well, for personal reasons, uh, I don't talk about my religion, my faith much on this channel. Uh, it's not really devoted to that, uh, but I am a Christian, and it's been weighing on my heart a little bit that Sundays are supposed to be different than all the other days of the week. It's the Lord's Day. It's supposed to be holy and sacred. You're supposed to be doing things that would get you to focus more on uh, becoming more like Jesus, maybe, or focus on, you know, things that are important, like your marriage, your family, your friends, relationships in your life, focusing on helping those who are less fortunate. You know, it's just supposed to be different than the regular grind of every day. This is, uh, you know, the way I was raised, and it is, I I've fallen away from my faith so many times in my life, and, you know, maybe that's a story for a different video, not right now, but, uh, you know, I've come back to it and I really want to uh, just make Sundays different. That's all. I want it just to be different than all the other days because every day, you know, I'm filming, I'm setting up for a shot, I'm reviewing it, uh, deleting it, retaking it, setting it up again a different way. And, you know, some days I put a little more effort in than other days. And But every day, you know, I'm filming, editing, rendering, uploading. Yeah, it's on top of delivering freight. I'm a busy guy. I like to keep myself busy, you know. Idle hands are never very good. You gotta know, keep your hands busy. And uh, so I'm busy every day of the week. But I know a bulk of you probably maybe don't share my beliefs and that, that's fine. I'm not here to uh, preach at you or anything, but uh, just letting you know that for personally, I want to make Sundays different than all the other days. I can't park my truck on Sundays. I do got to keep driving, but I am able to reduce all of the different distractions that I have in the day down to a bare minimum. And that's what I want to do. I just want to make Sundays different. So no more videos or uploads on Sundays from now on. So... I hope you guys can, I, I know you guys can understand that I got a great audience out there. All of you uh, are awesome people. You're all around the world and uh, I'm sure you can understand this and respect that. So just wanted to let you know uh, why there won't be any videos on Sundays and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gone. I'll be back on Monday, but just for Sundays, there won't be any editing. There won't be any uploading. There won't be any work. I, I would like to completely cut social media out of it completely and just detach myself and focus on more important things on Sundays but we'll see uh, we'll see where we go for, for now we're gonna just reduce everything to the bare minimum anyways I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you tomorrow take care my name is Leander Fair I'm from Asuncion Paraguay South America and you are watching Trucker Josh vlogs with diesel